guten Abend. And that is the end of my German. <laughs> and so now you have to deal with my poor English. <laughs> um, President Stadler and the board, Globart members, Heidi, your staff and team, all of my friends. I feel such gratitude. You know, we are with Heidi tonight, and I feel that uh, we are all Heidi's children. Heidi is the mother of Globart, and Heidi is really the mother of the World Peace Game in Europe. So I would like to talk about when that dream came true. And not just dreams, but let me talk about a love story, too. Uh, dreams and love stories, some people think they're the same thing. Depending on how it turned out, maybe it's not the same thing. <laughs> but in this case, dreams are so beautiful, they're sparkly, they're wonderful sometimes, we enjoy them. But the point of a dream is to wake up and to bring the dream into reality. It's nice to have a dream, but to wake up and then to do something, to open the door, as Heidi said in the film. So how to make these dreams become real so we can enjoy the wonder that we felt? I know for myself, the World Peace Game has shown me four things about how to make my dreams come true. And I know that these four things that I learned in four decades of working with the World Peace Game, when I met Globart, immediately there was a resonance, a connection. These four things we share. The first one is introspection, self-introspection. In order to do anything well, anything good, we first, I think, best have to know who we are. We have to know ourselves. And I don't mean what flavor of ice cream we like or what's our particular uh, kind of music or what style of dance we like, but I mean to deeply understand who we are in granular detail. Granular detail. And to not just do one self-inventory, but to do it continuously day after day all of our lives so that we can find our flaws and weed them out and become better people. We may have strengths and virtues, and that's good. We should celebrate them. But our flaws can undermine all the good that we do. So first, introspection is what I learned in the World Peace Game and I saw in Globe Art. They did a lot of work outwardly, but they were always looking, how are we doing? Are we just celebrating 200 people? Or are we giving opportunities to change? New options, as they say in the film. So the second thing I learned was passion. In order to accomplish something, we have to have a passion. And certainly there is a passion in this room for 20 years. I'm sure you've had your ups and downs, but for 20 years to sustain and maintain for the good of others, not just for yourself. This is what you've done. In the World Peace Game, my mentor said, Hunter, don't worry so much about content. It changes every five minutes. Instead, Find out who your children are. Find out what they love, what they're passionate about, what they really care about, and then build curriculum all around their passion. Because you've respected them and love what they love, they will follow you anywhere. Their passion will drive the learning. You don't even have to teach. I thought, well, that's a great formula. I'll try that. So passion. The third thing I thought I discovered or learned from this process was wisdom. Now, I don't have so much, but when I have 25 or 30 students in front of me, we discover collective wisdom. I thought, I'm the teacher. I'm in charge. Heidi Dobner's in charge. But I'm from 1954. 
So why should I let my 1954 computer decide everything for all of these 21st century people? Doesn't make any sense. But if I network my old what, Atari computer mind with the 21st century IMAX, then we have a network that's super powerful and I'm not alone. I'm working with a team. I trust the students as colleagues, as peers, as co-creators, as collaborators together. And this is what we see in Globe Art, collaborators. I started teaching. My supervisor wouldn't tell me what to do. She said, what do you want to do? So frustrating, because I wanted direction. I met Heidi Dobner. I said, Heidi, what shall I do? What do you want to do? <laughs> I can't get away from that question, but I'm so glad that Globart asked that question because that allows us to be who we want to be. So thank you for asking that question. And finally, the last thing that comes up that I learned from this process is compassion. Active love, not just a fondness, but almost taking a vow that not only do I wish for your happiness, but I will take it upon myself to bring that happiness about for you. Because we understand we are interdependent and my happiness is directly connected with your happiness. We may appear to be separate. We may appear to be different. But if we be with someone for a little while, we understand we are deeply, deeply connected. We are family. We are a family. So these four things are what I came to learn. In the World Peace Game, the children go through these four things. They develop introspection. They find their passion. They join with others and discover wisdom. And it flowers into the flower of compassion, almost the ultimate goal in a way. So I just want to talk a little bit about myself as a teacher in light of this, how a teacher's dream can come true. You know, we're all teachers. We all have had teachers. We all stand on the shoulders of teachers. We would not be here tonight if it were not for our teachers. If you think back on your teachers, certainly there was at least one who changed everything for you. You can think now about that teacher how that person made a gesture, said a word, a little extra effort, and everything changed for you. So for me, as a teacher, I'm teaching in a small college town in the mountains of Virginia, in the US, and I'm working, doing my curriculum, as all teachers do. We just try to do the best we can. And I got an email, a very sweet email, from a little Austrian lady. She said, John Hunter, we like this World Peace game. It seems very sweet. Would you come to Vienna? Would you come to Krems? We want to give you an honor, an award. I said, an honor? Well, I like honors. That sounds very nice. When can I come? She says, right, right. You come right now. You give a nice speech. Oh, do I have to? Yes, come give a nice speech. So I came <laughs> and I discovered Heidi and Globart. And it was a revelation because here was a vision for peace through many different ways. I had only one vision, this world peace game where children, they, they, they solve interlocking global problems and achieve peace. That was just my one vision. But here I saw so many speakers, so many artists, so many performers, so many scientists with so many visions together in one place brought together by Globe Art. I was amazed. I was in awe. And I was on this stage with, in my, I had a black gown and there was a gentleman here, Joachim, he had a white gown. So we were like night and day together. <laughs> and we made great friends. We had a wonderful time on this very stage, on the, the stage and the, the cluster, I think. So that started me off in Immersdorf. We were in Immersdorf with our first world peace game in Europe. An amazing experience. The children were there. I, fresh face, happy children, having a wonderful time. One incident 
the, the little boys who were there. You know, we have this in the World Peace Game, arms dealers. We put the dark side in. You know, we have the United Nations, we have the World Court, we also have the arms dealers. And I said, who would like to be an arms dealer? In Austria, nobody raised their hand. No children. Please, someone. Nobody wants. Finally, we convinced some boys to be arms dealers. The boys were the ones who did it. And at the end of the game, these arms dealers, end of this World Peace Game in Immersdorf in 2013, these arms dealers suddenly made a huge donation of money to a country that was in trouble. And I said, they're selling weapons. Why are, I said, gentlemen, you're selling weapons. Why are you helping out this country? And they said, well, we are humans too, and they are suffering, and we could be suffering someday, so we will help them. Out of the mouths of children. Yes, it's amazing. So Heidi, after the 2012 talk, you know, she sort of, I felt like a sort of shy coquette because she kind of courted me. Come on, John, come back. John, come again, we'll do some more. So I, I felt very, uh, I first sought after because she was very persuasive. So from that first game in Immersdorf in 2013, I came back again and again and again. You know, teaching, like some other professions, is very beautiful, but it's also bittersweet. You put everything you have into the child, your heart, your soul, your extra time, your worry and concern, everything and then you have this child for a certain amount of time and then one day they graduate, they move on and they leave and you may never see them again. You may never see them again. You may never even know what happened to them. So if you're an educator, if you're a teacher like me, you lay awake at night thinking about them. You can see their faces from decades ago I wonder what happened to that one. Where is this one now? I'm still worried about that child. And you may never know. So it's always a, a little sadness in you about that. But I was just walking in Krems the other day, yesterday, in fact, down the street, lost in thought. And I passed this young man, tall, healthy, strong, handsome fellow, Austrian gentleman, young man. I looked at him and he looked at me and I felt something. We passed each other and I thought, oh, that's strange, it seems I felt something. And I heard this booming voice, you, I know you, you, come here, I know you. I said, yes, I'm Sebastian. I played the World Peace Game four years ago in Immersdorf. <laughs> I'm going to Krems University now. Something in his face I recognized. It was him, the little fellow who was the Secretary of State. <laughs> and we talked and I told him I was so proud and, and I was so happy to see him, but it hit me all of a sudden. This dream I had 40 years ago of a world peace game. I said, you have to wake up and make the dream become real. Here was this young man, a fruit, a product of the dream. I had no idea, it's not my doing, but there it was. The bitter sweetness became sweeter because I knew what happened to him. This dream would not have come true if not for the love story that underpins it, the love story involving globe art. Just in the few years that I've known um, Heidi and her team, Pippa and Veronica, 
and uh, the many people who've been supporting this organization. It has been an amazing and supportive experience for me. You know, I come from the town of Charlottesville, Virginia. You might have heard about it in the news. Some very difficult times we've had. But I knew that when that happened, I was not there at the time, but when it happened, I knew that the next thing I have to look forward to is I'm coming to Krems to be with Heidi Dobner, and that's going to make me feel better. That's going to inspire me to go back and be more compassionate, to be kinder, to try harder, to be more helpful and more loving and more kind. That inspiration comes from here. It comes from Austria. It comes from Krems. It comes from Vienna. It comes from Globart. I cannot begin to thank you enough. So I'll finish. You know, when teachers start talking, <laughs> sometimes it can go on for a while. They told me I have a limit, though. So I will stop eventually. But I will share a story with you. Teachers have to tell stories, so I will tell a story. You may think you see a person, an individual on a stage receiving an award, and it's a wonderful thing, you feel good, they feel good, we, we have done something wonderful. But we don't see the hidden story behind every person. Of course, we can't. So every person that has come across this stage or the stage of Globe Art to receive an award or has been a part of the organization to put that together. There's a hidden story, a small, quiet story that may be the seed of everything. So I want to share one story. Again, it's about how a dream came true for a teacher. This one is a little hard for me to tell because um, Well, I just say, you know, my children play the world peace game. It's a game. We're playing. We enjoy it. We have a good time. We learn. In the game, I have the students who engage in warfare. They can engage in warfare if they want to. They always work their way through it and realize it's not a good idea. They always do. Forty years of trying, they always realize that's just not a good idea. In this game, they can wage warfare if they like. They move their little plastic soldiers around the board and they say, I'm going into war. I have to do it to protect our country, defend our people, or to avenge an insult. And there's a set of random choices that determine if they win or lose. If they lose, I require them to write a letter, just a short letter. They're nine years old, a brief letter explaining their actions to the fictional parents of the fictional soldiers that they lost in battle. It's a little solemn, but a little abstract, so it's, it's not uh, inappropriate for children, just a little solemn. So they read their letter, dear parents, I'm sorry to tell you, and they go on and they apologize at the end. Well, a few years after the Globe Art Award, I was visiting a school. I come from a public school. It's not so well funded, but funded well enough. But this school I was going to was a very wealthy school, fantastically wealthy school. Hundreds of acres, stone buildings, and there were only a few students. So it was very well off. Unfortunately, I developed a bit of an attitude, I thought. They don't know anything about me. I'm middle class. They have no idea about my life. So we come to the airport. A car, a very nice sedan, black Lexus, I think, late model, comes to pick us up. Out of the car steps a young man, very handsome, well-dressed, nice suit, lovely shoes, a big gold college ring on his finger, nice haircut. He says, yes, sir. So we get into his car. I've already figured him out. 
I say. He's just a rich kid, never worked a day in his life, doesn't know anything about where I come from. He has no idea about the real life. So we're driving to the school. He's been sent to pick us up. He's a teacher at the school, a young teacher. He's driving. He says, Mr. Hunter. Yes. I like that movie that you're in, that World Peace and other fourth grade achievements that was made about the World Peace game. I said, oh, really? Well, why do you like that? He said, I like that you um, have the students write that letter. Oh, well, why do you like that? And there was a long silence. And I saw his hands tighten on the steering wheel. And he said, a year and a half ago, young man in his 30s, early 30s, I was Marine Corps combat officer. I did a number of tours in Afghanistan and Iraq. I was in the Battle of Fallujah, the first one, which is one of the worst, if you know your military history, one of the worst street to street, house to house, hand to hand combat situations. I don't know where I got the nerve to ask, but I said timidly, how, how was that? And I saw his hands tighten and he said, looking straight ahead, it was kinetic. It was a kinetic situation. And then he said, I like that you have them write that letter because I had to write that letter. I had to make that phone call. I had to go to the door of the parents, their home and knock on the door and tell them that their son or their daughter had been killed. So Mr. Hunter, I'm a school teacher, you're a school teacher. You keep having them write that letter. You keep having them play that game. And maybe someday they won't have to write that letter like I had to. Here's a young man I misjudge completely who's seen the worst that humans can do, the worst, the very worst. And he's saying to a small town school teacher, keep playing that game. Just keep playing the game with the children because they are the only hope we have. The only hope we have. You look at Heidi and Globart, and who do you see? The first thing you see, stairs full of children. The first thing you see. The volunteers, what are they, teenagers, young people. Most organizations, you know, we hire experts, the adults, seasoned veterans. What is she doing? What is Globart doing? Cultivating the hope of the future so that this dream can be made real and come true. So I'll finish with one positive story, a short one. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh, he's going, we, we did the, we haven't had the wine yet, so they're still awake. Okay, very good. Uh, when I was teaching last, at my last school, again, I use a lot of teaching examples, but I think it reflects and resonates with what Globart is doing. I used to do what we call bus duty. If you're a teacher, you might know bus duty. You go out to the schoolyard in the front with a Buses and cars come in in the morning, and you open the door to greet the children safely, get them into the building. So I was opening the door, ushering them in every morning. This is my job. And then I go in and teach. 
So one day I thought, that child was so happy, so full of life. They just look like they're going to be something wonderful. I think that that's just one chance for greatness right there. And so for some silly reason, I started to say, every time I opened the car door and a child got out, hey, that's one chance for greatness, come on in. Hello, good morning, a chance for greatness, come in. A minivan pulls up with 17 children. Hi, there's 17 chances for, for, for greatness, come in please. So I kept doing that. And it struck me all of a sudden one day how true that really was because any one of them, any one of them, and I don't know who, could be the one who develops a cure for Alzheimer's. This one could help cure breast cancer. This one could help us figure out a way to feed everyone. This one could figure out how to eliminate nuclear weapons. I mean, some of them were poorly dressed and some of them were poor, and, but we don't know which one it is. It could be any one of them. So I realized we cannot afford to lose even one of them. We cannot afford to lose a single one of them. A sin not a single one. Selfishly, it could be the one who saves me. But just, it could be the one who helps us all. We just don't know who it is. So every child has that potential. Every child is so precious, so valuable. I know you saw it when you saw them standing here. Did you see their faces? How incredibly rich and varied and wonderful and potential right in front of us that Globe Art puts front and center. What a thing. So I just want to thank you and thank Heidi and say that someone here had a vision. Someone reached out across an ocean to a small town in Virginia and said, John Hunter, come and dream with me. Would you come and dream with Globe Art? John Hunter, let's make the dream of peace actually come true. Amen. So that dream is coming true in Austria, in Krems, and because the mother of the World Peace Game in Europe, Heidi Dobner, has worked so hard with me and dreamed so hard, the World Peace Game, since you pulled us out of that small town, is now in 28 countries around the world. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Globe Art. Thank you, Austria. Thank you, Krems. <laughs>